As we know, a 360 image is an interesting presentation method that can easily show environments and by using it we don't have to aim the camera anywhere because we can trust that everything around the shooting point will be recorded. But how can 360 degree image be utilized in 3D scanning and how can sphere images be translated into a 3D model? Hello boys and girls, it's all here again. About a year ago I started researching the possibilities of 360 cameras and I did a lot of different experiments on how to use the material in 3D modeling. I still believe that 360 degree image can be an effective way to collect the required number of images with one shot, which can be used as a data set for photogrammetry or on these new radiance field methods such as Gaussian splatting. Although it is possible to scan individual objects, the 360 camera is best suited for scanning environments and, for example, realizing interior models using these large images is the most useful. However, the biggest challenge is the basic format in which 360 degree images are created by default. Such basic dual lens 360 cameras often produce so-called equirectangular images, which are wide-angle images fused together in a 2 by one ratio that includes the wide angles seen by both lenses. These images have strong fisheye lens distortions with a lot stretched information at the top and the bottom edges of the image that can only be seen when the image is wrapped around 3D sphere. And in this form, the equirectangular image is used a lot in 3D production as a background image or in HDR format, it can be also used for lighting or making reflections over 3D surfaces. But it is still only a 2D image, which as such is not very usable for building 3D models. Since in photogrammetry method, the aim is to form a three-dimensional point cloud from the series of images, the images must be flat and have clear perspective lines. Pictures with strong lens distortions are difficult for the computer vision algorithm to calculate and very few programs are able to produce a 3D point cloud from 2D images with curved perspective lines, like these. Therefore, the 360 degree image should always be processed and broken down into a parts where lens distortion can be eliminated. One of these methods is to convert an equirectangular image into a cube map image, which means turning a sphere into a cube. In the cube map format, the same 360 degree information is wrapped on the surface of the box. And as we know, the box consists of six faces. When we look at the, each of these individual square faces, we notice that the perspective lines are now straight and the lens distortion has disappeared. So these square images are much more suitable for making a 3D point cloud. But before that, we need to look at which of the faces of the cube are actually usable. Depending on what kind of a space we are scanning, it is important how we manage to position ourselves in relation to the 360 camera. If you scan such an interior where the ceiling is low, it is difficult for us to position ourselves under the camera. For example, the bottom and back images can often be completely left out the conversion in these cases because I myself 
can be seen in the image and cover a large part of the important image information. The top view angle is also mostly useless because it often goes too close to the ceiling surface and cannot produce a significant value for point cloud calculation. So that leaves us only three angles, front, left and right. Of these, left and right are the most useful and important images because they represent the central part of the 360 camera lenses. The front angle can also be useful, but it is worth remembering that this angle contains a stitching seam line that becomes visible the closer we get to the walls. The seam line is the line that forms between lenses when the images from the 360 camera are combined. It is also the right place where you should position yourself when using the 360 camera for 3D scanning. And with this in mind, you should also avoid unnecessarily rotating the camera around its own axis during the scanning. When the stitched seam line moves in the image, it can easily ruin and make the scanning material unusable. Although many Insta360 cameras have a horizon lock feature that keeps the horizon level even, if you turn the camera sideways in the middle of shoot, you should also avoid this if you know that you are going to convert the images to cube map format later. When 360 camera is turned to a horizontal position, and even if the show's material looks like it is in order, the camera orientation data still contains the information that camera was in horizontal position, and thus the cube map information goes wrong way around. That's why this should be avoided and it's good to have the camera in vertical position when you're scanning the room from different heights, such as medium height. If you want to use the selfie stick and keep the camera in its vertical position, you can for example get a special gauge gear like this around the camera. In this gauge there is a thread on the side where you can attach the selfie stick. This way the camera stays in the right position when you scan from medium height. But one thing that is interesting and good to know about the orientation of the camera is that if you turn the camera over the horizontal plane, at least the camera of this model understands it as a vertical angle and the cube map order is set to correct shape again. Therefore, it is possible to hold the camera in an oblique position on the end of the selfie stick when scanning at low height. But that's enough about scanning itself. Let's go back to the original plan and examine how to convert a 360 sphere image into a cube map. As you might guess, there are some services or applications on the internet related to this topic. You can find some codes on GitHub to try the conversion and some photogrammetry programs such as Meshroom contain a separate command line functions that separates cube map squares from 360 images. But exactly for this 3D purpose, where I would like to extract image sequences from the video from which I could then choose the cube map squares I want, I couldn't find much help. That's why I boldly decided to ask for help from the artificial intelligence and build my own software with which I could solve this issue. I'm not really a coder, I know a bit about web programming such as HTML5 and JavaScript, but I had no idea how to make a conversion application like this. But since I had a clear vision of what the program should be like, I set out to build my own converter with the help of ChatCTP. And I was amazed how I managed to create a small Windows desktop application by using c -sharp programming language and WPF, which means Windows Presentation Foundation, that works as a user interface for the program. 
It is far from perfect, but this version does what I want, so let's see how it works. First, you must make sure that you have 360 image material in equi rectangular format. You can input single images or MP4 videos, and it's done simply by dragging the files into this field. In this case, I drag this equi rectangular video into my converter. Since it is a video, I can type the interval setting at which the image sequences are extracted from the source file. The default is 30 frames, which in this case means that every second a picture is taken from the video. After that, the process is very simple. We just have to select the output folder where we want to save the cube map images. As an option, I can also adjust which images from the cube map I want to save. If this setting is turned off, all six faces of the cube are separated and saved. But if I turn this on, only the most central and most usable left and right angles are saved. In addition to this, I can also decide if I want to keep the full equi rectangular images separated from the video. If this is turned off, at the end the process will remove the folder where the frames of the intermediate stage were saved. Then we just press the convert button. The program starts extracting frames from the video every 30 frames and saves them in the separate video frames folder. This will take some time. When the full equi rectangular images have been extracted from the video, the process starts separating the cube map squares and they are saved in the output directory you choose before the conversion. And that's about it. After the process is done, you have a series of cube map images in JPEG format, which you can now use in the calculation of a 3D model, such as in the post chart or in reality capture program. Of course, it is a good idea to check and scroll through the images and possibly remove those dark and bad images that are not useful in the calculation. Although CubeMap may not perfectly solve all the necessary angles, it is nevertheless a good basic function for editing 360 images. In order to be able to produce a versatile image dataset in addition to the CubeMap images, I recommend looking through the material in the Insta360 Studio program. There you can easily separate additional images to support the cube map images and collect such angles that the details were not visible in the cube map format. In the Insta360 Studio you have the opportunity to produce similar one by one square images as the cube map images are. When the images are in the same format photogrammetry and Gaussian splatting programs have better chance to produce a 3D point cloud. If you want to try this converter I programmed, I will put the download link in the description. It is very early in development and may still contain a lot of bugs, but at least it can be tested for converting 360 images. If you have experience or know some other good ways to convert cube map images, please leave a comment below. I hope this video was interesting and opened up the possibilities of 360 images a bit. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will continue to scan the 360 degree images. Thanks for watching.